TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. You can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If you can't make it to the live or you missed the live, man, right here, this channel will have all the highlights. It will indeed. Um, we also got the Patreon and we also got the Discord. If you're looking to follow any of these things, the links are down in the link tree below in the description. Just, you know, click it. Now, this is something that I've been telling my scousers about, man. Renovating an abandoned $1 home in Liverpool. Where are this? What, how do I get in on this? I got people that do construction in the UK and I'm cool with. Like, we could, like, we can, we can, like, buy some of these and, like, help people out. Low, make them low income or whatever we need to do. I've been asking about this. Proof's in the pudding. Go look at older videos. I told you I wanted to buy some property in, in Liverpool and rent it out. Somebody said I was capping. I'm like, okay. Well, you see it happen. <laughs> Don't say nothing. No, you cannot get in there since I'm capping. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. This is by CNBC Make It. This is, this is just, nobody asked me to do this. I'm just watching. I, do, I find it interesting, goddammit. So these were all one pound houses, boarded up, earmarked for demolition. This whole area looked like this five years ago. We had that in Chicago too. With like, or uh, This was in Chicago and in Detroit where they had the one dollar houses. When they just had it, I just didn't have a dollar in my name. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And I felt like I was too far away. And I don't even know what was going to happen. But, like, for, for Liverpool, I feel like that's home. <laughs> we could do it. I'm talking about Detroit. I was too far away. Chicago, I don't know what was going to happen to that thing if I would have did it. I remember when I was first allowed into the property. And I had to sign a waiver to say that I was willing to enter at my own risk. There was water ingress. The brickwork was crumbling. The windows were bricked up. It was in very bad condition. I found <laughs> yeah, damn, this is a dollar for real. You had to put crazy amount in here. But the loans that are available for renovation, it's like, it's, it's, all, it's all right. As long as you go into a bank with a real plan, you good. I fell in love with it. It was my crumbling pile of bricks. Welcome to Liverpool, UK. My name is Maxine, and this is my home I bought for a pound. Trying to see if she had a gap back there, but now nah, she just. My bad. <laughs> My name is Maxine Sharples. I'm 36 and I bought a two bedroom house for $1 in Liverpool, UK. In 2015, I heard about the Home for a Pound scheme through a neighbour. I was a postgraduate student at the time with nominal savings and thought, well, I'll just cross that bridge when I get to it and applied. Four years later, I received a phone call telling me I was shortlisted for one of the homes for a pound. I thought it was a scam. So I agreed to give them a pound and be interviewed for a property. It turns out it wasn't a scam. And in 2020, I was given the keys to wow. my one pound house. And now look at you eating, drinking tea. Probably some uh, biscuits somewhere close. Today, Maxine pays around $337 a month towards utilities and council fee and council tax. It's not bad. And 125 month toward her IKEA kitchen. Mmm, IKEA came, built the kitchen, and she put it on like credit. That's tough. Smart. Is this still a thing? Let me just move because I'm not gonna be reading all day. You get what I'm saying? Best, best editor on the platform. I, I got it. Don't even worry about it. I'm going to get down here, Maxine. I will show you this street now, which you can see next, side by side. Go back. Maxine has a two-bedroom Victorian townhouse. Had been abandoned for 15 years. Wow. I will show you this street now, which you can see next side by side what was a one pound house before renovation and what's a one pound house after renovation. One pound house after renovation. One pound house before renovation. There were several conditions I had to satisfy. Okay. 
I had to be living or working in Liverpool. Ah. I had to have not owned a property previously. Oh. And I also had to have the funds to renovate the property myself. This all had to also be done within a 12 month period of time. So you couldn't just have it there sitting and own it. It had to be done at a reasonable pace. And we had, you had to have proof that you could do it. Okay, that makes sense. 61, 49, 49 When I was shortlisted, my financial situation had changed. My father, who had passed away, had a property that I inherited, which I sold, which gave me enough money to then fund the renovations. Is she reading off something, or is she like... For me, I decided. I ain't gonna lie, that looked terrible. I decided to flip the living arrangement so that downstairs I have two bedrooms and a bathroom, and upstairs is my living and kitchen room. So Which after makes I sense. have my architecture. That's how it is in America, when you got like duplexes and stuff like that. Brought my plans. I was tendering out to contractors. What contractors were available were way over my budget. Not only were they expensive, but they also weren't available to start for six to twelve months. Like quarter for a child. So one of the first jobs was to make the house watertight, which meant I had to get a new roof. Another big job was the structural changes. I was able to remove a lot of the internal walls and ceilings myself. I'm impressed that she did this by herself. And she was living van life? Okay. I was saving about $1,300 a month by living in my camper van. I kind of want to do the van so life So I had but... hit rock bottom at this point. Funds were low. I'd just gone through a breakup. I was unemployed Ooh. and I couldn't find reliable tradespeople to do work. So at one point I thought that the house was going to be taken off me and my money would be lost. And you know what's crazy? <laughs> okay, this is not funny, but you know how there's a lot of immigrants in America, and there's probably a lot of there too, but like you see movies, like I used to watch movies and I used to see people like go to a store and pick people up to come go to work for them for cheap labor and, and things of that nature. I didn't, I've ne I thought that was fake. I didn't think that was real until I moved to Florida. Like, I'm not even lying, I'm, I'm so serious right now. There's a Home Depot, like, close to me. And every morning or every uh, afternoon, there's, a, there's always a bunch of people standing there. I'm like, what's going on here? They look like they was ready to, for work. But they wasn't getting on no buses. And I would see, like, one morning I had seen, I think after I dropped my daughter off from school, I got off the bus. The bus stopped right in front of Home Depot. I got off the bus. And I seen a bunch of pickup trucks just loading people in. I'm like, I couldn't believe my eyes. This this was real. And I don't knock either side of it. You know, people want people want to get paid. To, you know, people got to make a living, and people want cheap labor. That's still good. You know what I'm saying? That's tough. I was like, this is real. I, do they have that in the UK? Like those scenarios? <laughs> it's crazy to me though. Anyway. Down and I wasn't seeing anyone as much. I bumped into friends in the park and shared my woes with them. And a few weeks later, I had a group of friends bring me back to life, came round, helped out with the project, and really gave me renewed vigor to continue. What's the best kind of home security? Customized. I'm not gonna leave, lie, Maxine. So I was... Oh, wait, wait, wait. The local council extended the deadline to complete the renovations for 24 months. Because, oh, the pandemic. RIP to everybody who lost their life in the pandemic and things of that nature. But the pandemic was your silver lining. That's crazy. So I was due to complete in February 2022. And I was signed off in May 2022. So I'd gone over 
by three months. Again? I'd completed the upstairs, so I was living in my kitchen for the first six months before I had enough money to complete the renovations downstairs. 74,000 on renovations. <laughs> but think about it, like, you bought this for a dollar. You spent $74. That's, is that cheaper? Is that, is that cheap in the UK for a home? For a whole home? 74K? Out here, 74K is cheap. And I'm pretty sure I could have got it for cheaper than that. You know what I'm saying? Before renovations, the dining room doorway was here. I, I like her style, Maxine. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be locked in the house, but you know. If you're still single, Instagram's in the description. Hit me in the DM. <laughs> Bricked it up <sighs> and moved the staircase to the back of the house. In the original layout, this was the living room. As you can see, it's just a storage room. In order to make the new design work, I had to fit a bathroom and a staircase into the existing kitchen floor space. We bricked up the back door and I feel it has everything I need. It's Although a nice it's not bathroom. a bathtub, the space works pretty well. So the old dining room is now my bedroom. I feel that the bedroom- For some reason, I feel like her whole house is just mismatched. This is just all mismatch. Don't nothing match. Bathroom don't match the room, don't match the, you know what I'm saying? It's big enough. It contains a king size bed. I renovated the bedroom and completed it with underfloor heating. That's why you spent so much? <laughs> underfloor heating, like, come on. I removed Chill. the window and replaced it with patio doors, which gives me direct access into the yard. Not quite. The what? Which gives me direct access into the yarden. Did Maxine just make up a word? Hey Siri. Huh? Yarden. It's lit, it's lit. See, she made that up. Siri don't know what that is. I'm I'm pretty sure it's a garden mixed with a yard a, a yard, but that's that's what's going on? What's up, Jeremy? Not quite a garden, more like a work in progress. But I've bricked up the old back door, as you can see there, and repurposed joists into a seating area, flower planters, and a bike shed. And now for the upstairs. Typically in the UK... She's giving me real Mary Poppins vibes. Mary Pop I don't know what's going on. The bedrooms and bathroom are upstairs, but I flipped it. This used to be the bathroom, but I've managed to fit a stairway landing and a small utility in here. Now for my favorite part of the house. In what used to be the two bedrooms, we now have this beautiful open plan space. By removing all internal walls of the bedrooms and the ceiling, I've managed to create this double height space. Add in a few Velux roof lights and voila, the place is flooded with natural light. Okay, okay, okay. You can sell where she spent most money. She spent money here and these heated floors. Being in here is uplifting. It's where I practice my yoga. It's where I read. It's where I chill. Where's your couch at? <laughs> you got a whole hammock in that joint? I feel it, it's your house, but you be having company over it all? And I'm always not very far from the fridge. <laughs> she's just a free spirit. <laughs> and I'm guessing she's a vegan. <laughs> have my plants hanging. The light in here is amazing and my plants loved being here. I've taken advantage of the steel beams and used a I-beam clamp and a chain hoist to hang a chair. This is my urban... This is so creative. Tranquil paradise. I spend a lot of time up here. Just one time in my life I want to date a girl like that though, low key, because I feel like them the type of girls that, that be cr like, Freaky freaky, you know what I'm saying? All of these houses you see. I bet you she can bake really good. All her baked goods is A1. See around me where 
originally earmarked for demolition. So not only have they been brought back to life, but they've been restored in such wonderful taste in keeping with the area and all the colours as well. I like how they've decided to paint the bays a different colour. So this is a community. Should look like Baltimore. <laughs> this look like Baltimore, Maryland. Community regenerated through the Homes for a Pound scheme. It's so difficult for anyone to get on the property ladder unless you've got pennies from heaven like I had. You know, I don't take it for granted that without that windfall, I would never be able to do this. So I'm overjoyed at being able to live in such a beautiful home that I put, so I'm. See what I be talking about though? Doors is overrated. She got a nice door, but the framing needs to be redone. It should look terrible. And me personally, on my door, I've never had no glass. Not doing it. Overjoyed at being able to live in such a beautiful home that I put so much blood, sweat, and tears into that I can now it enjoy. It is nice. And if I ever did Parts of it. leave, it would only ever be rented out. I don't think I'd ever want to sell this house. It means too much to me. I've invested too much into it to sell it. It's priceless. Well, Marilyn, invest your time into me next. You know what I'm saying? Take me out the club. Take me out the trap. <laughs> Tell her leave a like, comment, subscribe, and go.